All right, so this is an interesting physics problem. Uh, I actually, I'll, I'll let you know, I did find this in a book. I think it was called The Flying Circus of Physics. It had just a whole bunch of cool problems in it. Um, so here's the situation. I have a wall. This is just a piece of Lego. It's not actually a wall. Well, it's kind of a wall. And then I have a car. So the car is traveling straight towards this wall. And you don't want to crash. Okay, so option one is you're driving this way and you slam on the brakes. So how far, how far away can you be and miss the wall? Okay, now, oh, maybe I have a better option. And this is an infinitely length wall here. So now instead of stopping, I'm going to go, nerd. I'm squeaking because it's like just right at that, that time. So is it better to just stop or is it better to turn and avoid the wall? Okay, so let's do it. So let's just calculate the stopping distance for both cases. Here I have a wall, I have a car, this is a top view, uh, moving at some velocity v0, I'll call that, and it's the distance s from the wall. I want to find out what this distance s has to be in order to stop. Okay, let's look at the car from the side real quick. So here's my car. Yeah, that's my, that's my car. And so we have uh, the forces acting on it while it's stopping. We have the gravitational force we have the upward pushing normal force, and then we have the backwards push, pushing frictional force. This frictional force, the static friction between the tire and the cars, that's what's going to stop the car. So at the maximum static friction force, F, I'll call it F, the magnitude, F max, I'll be clear to say it's max, that's going to be equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. That's our model for friction. Okay. Now, in the y direction, if I look at this, f net y is zero because it's not accelerating up or down. So that means that the normal force minus mg has to be equal zero. So n equals mg. And that gives me a friction maximum force, f max, of mu s mg. That's important. That's the magnitude. We'll use that for both cases. Okay, so now back over here, I only have that one force from the top, uh, the max friction force pushing backwards. Now, how do I find the distance that this force would have to apply to stop the car? So there's a lot of ways you could do this. I could solve for the acceleration of the car and then use kinematic equations. But I want to use work energy. And this should be a good practice for you because if you see a problem that has that doesn't depend on direction, I don't care which way the car is moving, I just want to stop it. Um, and it doesn't depend on time, but it does depend on distance. You should say, hey, work energy. So the work energy principle, the first thing I need to do is pick my system. And I'm going to use the car, just the car as a system, as a point particle. Okay, and that's important. Okay, so I'm, I don't really care how if the car warms up. I don't care if the car um, deforms. I don't care. Okay, all I care about is it is a point. So in the point particle system, I have worked on the car is the change in kinetic energy. It can't have any other kind of energy because it's just a point. This is important because I'm going to use uh, the frictional force to calculate the work. And you normally you couldn't do that because uh, the frictional force uh, increases the temperature of two objects, and you don't know which one increases how much, so or even how much it increases. So it's normally a bad thing, but here we can cheat and do that. So work is defined as F dot delta R, which would be the force, the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. So this is delta R, and that way is the force. So the angle theta is going to be equal to... Uh, pi, that's a theta, so cosine theta is negative 1. So the work done, and I'm going to use s as my distance, is going to be negative the frictional force max times s. And that's going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. Remember, k is 1 half mv squared. This is going to be the final kinetic energy, so 1 half m0 squared, because it stopped minus the initial kinetic energy, 1 half mv0 squared. 
Now also I can put in the expression for the frictional force and I get uh, negative mu s, and that's the coefficient of friction, mg s equals dot zero, negative one half m v zero squared. And now I want to solve for the distance s, the mass cancels, and I get, I'm going to divide both sides by negative mu s, and I get s, and I'm sorry, negative mu g, s equals uh, v zero squared over two mu s g. Okay, let's just see, let's just check, does it have the right units? We should always do that. This is going to be meters per second, meters squared per second squared. Two has no units and mu has no units. This is equivalent to meters per second squared. So the second squareds cancel, one of the meters cancel, I get meters. So that's good. Uh, the faster I travel, the longer it's going to take to stop and it's not linear. This is why you should leave more space between cars as you go faster. Um, and the greater the coefficient of friction, the shorter the stopping distance. That also makes sense. Okay, so there we go. That's our stopping distance. Now let's do turning. Okay, so here is my situation. There's my car, same car, same initial velocity, same wall. But now I'm going to do this. I'm going to just barely miss it by turning in a circle of radius r where this is also s so the radius of that circle has to be s so now what how what's my radius of curvature what's my radius of turning for this case uh, i still have the same diagram for the frictional force from essentially from the side the only difference is the frictional force is now this way f friction max is now pointing to the side, and that's what's gonna make this car turn. So if I have a force pointing towards the center of a circle, the speed's not gonna change, okay? Then I can write, let's call this my x in my y direction. So I can say F net y equals the acceleration of an object moving in a circle is gonna be uh, v squared, v naught squared, over r, but r in this case is s. This is mass times acceleration, and this is my acceleration for an object moving in a circle. Now what, oh, that's negative, technically. Now what force do I have in the y direction? It's still that same frictional force. And, you know, friction is complicated, but um, what, I, I'm gonna make the assumption that the sideways frictional force is the same as the front ways friction force. So this is the same in both cases. I think that's a reasonable approximation. So that means I can just use the same expression, negative mu s m g, negative m v zero squared over s. Solve for s, I'm gonna multiply both sides by s. That's the multiplication. Uh, and then I'm gonna divide both sides by that, and I get s equals negative m v zero squared over negative mu s m g. The masses cancel. And I get v zero squared over mu s g. Now remember, here's the other one, S this is S2. S1 is V0 squared over two mu SG. So this one, by stopping in a straight line, this is straight, turn. So by stopping in the straight line, you would have require half the distance as if you wanted to turn. So you should you should stop, don't turn. And this is not actual driving advice. This is just a physics problem, okay? Um, let me show you one more thing, because if you want to go crazy on this, you can. What if I have my wall, and I have my car, and it's not an infinite distance? So in this case, I'm driving, and I only need to turn like that. I don't need to turn all the way horizontal, I mean vertical. Does that make a difference? I'm going to leave that for you. Okay, so let's say this wall has a length L. Then would it be better to stop? Or would it be better to turn and just miss it? So you don't have to make as big of a circle here. I mean, you make a small of a circle, so it's a bigger circle. So you need, you could, uh, you don't, you don't, maybe you could do that. 
Um, here's another question. What if I did this? And this is, I'm not going to answer this one. This is for your homework. What if I did this? What if I want to break and turn? Like, is that better? Do both of those, right? Because I'm kind of increasing my distance. Okay. What if I do this? Break and turn and miss a non-finite wall. So you see that, that there are tons of great problems associated with this that you can explore and have fun with. And that's what I want you to do. Okay. So that's it for this one. I'll talk to you physics people later.